Welcome to the semifinals of Team Bowling's most colorful event, the Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League. Previously on PBA League, the Motown Muscle and EJ Tackett were the first to advance in the semis with a stunning upset over number one seed, LAX. The former Elias Cup champs, the Silver Lake Adam Splitters and Chris Barnes joined them, trouncing the Brooklyn Styles in a round. On the other side of the bracket, the two-time defending Elias Cup champ Dallas Strikers and Norm Duke survived a close call from New York City to advance to the semifinals. Over there, they'll face the Philadelphia Hitmen and Dom Barrett, the team who sent the hometown Portland Lumberjacks packing. We're down to four teams. One of these will take home the Elias Cup. He looks good. The place to be is Bayside Bowl in downtown Portland, Maine for the semifinals of the Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League. As always, the fans are ready for this Baker match team action. Let's take you through the brackets and show you the quarterfinals and what happened earlier. We had a sweep, the Motown Muscle taking out LA. Same for the Adam Splitters over the Styles. The Kingpins and Strikers went to a roll off, but the Hitmen took out the home team the Portland Lumberjacks 2-0. That sets us up with the top two seeds having been eliminated. And now, everyone, let's meet the Motown Muscle. We are the Motown Muscle. <laughs> Revving it up to overpower the PBA League. Motown Muscle. Leading off from Gilbert, Arizona, three time PBA titleist Josh Blanchard. Two in the order, 16-time Japanese PBA titleist and the number two overall pick in the draft from Fukuoka, Japan, Shukta Kawazoe. In the number three position, hailing from Quebec City, Quebec, Canada, your 2016 U.S. Open champion, Francois Lavoie. In the number four position, he owns a major among his three titles from Austin, Texas, Anthony Simonson. And your anchorman, nine-time titleist, one-time player of the year, the owner of two majors from Huntington, Indiana, E.J. Tackett. Your manager is a USBC and PBA Hall of Famer, one of the all-time greats from Keller, Texas, Dell Ballard Jr. <laughs> and their opponent, the Silver Lake Atom Splitters. We're the Atom Splitters. Two-time Elias Cup champion. Look who's back, baby. The MVP. Leading off from Gothenburg, Sweden, seven-time PBA titleist and owner of a major, Jesper Svensson. In the number two position, the Baron of Bayside with two titles here among his five PBA championships from Columbia, South Carolina, Dick Allen. Four, right? Good thing, Robbie. Good thing. 
In the three position, owner of five regional titles of Oswego, Illinois, E.J. Johnson. From Tampa, owner of two PBA titles, Tom Doherty. <laughs> and your anchorman is an 18 time PBA champion, owner of three majors and a triple crown, and a new PBA Hall of Famer, Double O Texas, Chris Barnes. And your manager from your Belinda, California, four PBA titles for Mark Baker. So there's the excitement that makes this such an amazing event. Along with the Hall of Famer Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler, I'm Dave Lamont. Randy, we had Motown kind of surprise a few folks coming out of that eight position, but. Dell Ballard Jr. has put together a young and very powerful team. He really has. And, you know, this team is really spearheaded and anchored by E.J. Tackett. He brings all of the muscle for Motown. Dell Ballard Jr., Hall of Famer, the manager, well, he's got this team moving in the right direction. Let's see if they can continue to ride that wave of momentum here in the semifinals. Been a couple of years since Silver Lake has gone this far. They had two championships already, and this is a strong squad. Yeah, it really is. And now they have a new addition in A.J. Johnson, who's really re-energized this team. And man, was he not exciting in his debut here in Portland, Maine, as we take a couple of looks at some of the shots he threw. And who can forget this massive messenger? Beautiful stuff. And A.J. is standing by right now, link side with Kimberly Pressler. That's right, so A.J., what does it mean to you that, that you bring in so much energy back into your team and being here? Uh, I really love bowling on a team. Uh, being on Team USA, now being fortunate enough to be drafted by these guys, uh, it's it's really cool. And having these guys behind you and this crowd when you throw a strike is just it's electric. What's it like to hear your name chanted like that from this crowd? <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, I just want to do my job and bring as much energy I can and, and feed off of the crowd here. Um, but I just want to keep doing my job, and we're going to take care of business. All right, we'll see if that works for you today, guys. Hi, Mason. Love you, Mom. His mom was here earlier in the week. Uh, yes, he uh, has done more than his job for Mark Baker, who uh, learned about AJ and really had a good chance to look at him a year ago. Yeah, also, you know, Mark Baker being a coach of Team USA, and he's been able to work a lot with AJ Johnson in the past, so he knew exactly what he was getting into. So, this Baker team allows each bowler to only bowl in two frames. You advance by winning both games, and if we have a tie at 1 1, as we did in the quarterfinals once, we will have a one ball roll off captain's choice. Starting on the left lane will be the Adam Splitters, and that means Jesper Spenson. And Jesper was pretty strong, had one bad shot in the quarters, but steadied after that. And the typically Stenson like strike. Man throws a lot of wood around when his bowling ball hits the pins. Remember, this is urethane, not reactive resin. Making him dance early. Josh Blanchard. We had no lineup changes, by the way, from the quarterfinals. Both uh, managers sticking with the winning formula. And Josh Blanchard was very strong in the quarters in that leadoff position. And Josh Blanchard sticking with urethane as well. There's Dick Allen, kind of a secret weapon. And again, we've talked about how he loves this house. He has won twice here. And there's why. <laughs> and now from Japan, Shota Kawazoe, number two overall pick. The number one player in Japan. Oh, 
trouble here with a 4-9. Well, it looked like it was left out of his hand immediately. And boy, does he pay for it. Just inside third arrow, this ball goes through the face. And a little unlucky leaving the four and the nine. They'll try to get the ball over to the left side of the four pin and slide it into the nine. Oh, he's hooking it. Ooh, just missed. So an early mistake for the muscle. A lot of times you see players throwing it straight at this, but Shota tried to hook it and almost made it. Well, we talked about him in the open, and you just heard him with Kimberly. A.J. Johnson has embraced this first visit to Maine. And that time the messenger just flopped that pin carry there was a little unusual AJ comes in light and just kind of shreds the rack let's take another look hmm. had a leaner on the 10 but it doesn't go and one of the chants you'll hear when there's a single pin up there is clean your plate should be obvious what that means Good son that he is, cleans his plate. The timeless game of Francois Lavoie, three strikes out of four and against LAX. Simplicity in action here. He's quietly one of the best players on tour. And he's quiet, period. See it right there. That speaks for his game. It's the beauty of team bowling. Picking up one of your partners. And that's exactly what Frankie Lavoie did there after the open by Shota. The guy who's not camera shy, Tom Doherty. And Tom's going to go with urethane. And you hear him, he wants the noise. This is one of the guys that does not want a quiet approach. He would prefer to have this place moving. Beautiful shot. You know, what's going to be interesting <laughs> over this show is with the Portland Lumberjacks, the home team knocked out of it. These fans are going to have to pick a favor. They're going to have to pick someone, a player, or a team to root for. And I, I, we talked about this earlier. As you see a perfect Anthony Simonson, who is going to take the crowd with him today? That, oh my goodness. That was evil. I get it back to your. Yeah, that was, that was <laughs> legitimately that, evil. That, that was some uh, sick pin action there by Simonson. But getting back to um, your comment, on, I, I have a favorite that I think the crowd's going to go with, and I think uh, it's your two-time defending champs and Norm Duke. It's a good choice. Here's a Hall of Famer inducted this year. Seven down. Senior carry. Senior carry. Senior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we saw in our previous shows that some of the best success on that left lane was playing farther right. That's exactly what Chris Barnes did there, exactly what Doherty did. And now, if you like rev rate, folks. Wow. Rev rate with your thumb in it. Just throwing it out there. Guy weighs about what, 125? Maybe. My goodness. Powerful start for both these sides in his first of two semifinals today.
The Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League Elias Cup semifinals are brought to you by Ocean View at Falmouth. An active, maintenance-free lifestyle just minutes from Portland. This is retirement living. By Go Bowling for promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. By Port Property Management, locally owned and operated since 1993. And by Spectrum Healthcare Partners Orthopedic Team, we're here to keep you in the game. Some of the natural beauty here in Portland, Maine. And there you see a pretty nice looking scoreboard. The big, of course, the mistake by Palazzoli for the open frame in the second. But Randy, we had some nasty strikes. What are we bowling on here? 42 feet, the Mark Roth pattern. Players can play all over. We've seen that already just halfway through game one. You can play in, you can play right with urethane, and there's the great one. And the MVP award named after Mark. You'll see that in the finals next week. A lot of Swedish support back there for Jesper. It must be nice. It just must be nice to be able to do that on command. Not one ball out of the pocket. Six and a half frames for both teams. A 10 pin and a 4 9 split. And that's it. Everything else strikes. So Josh Blanchard, 10th overall pick. He wants the crowd to get involved here. Now, in the leadoff position, you bowl the first and sixth frame. So this will be the last frame for Josh in this game, unless there is a roll off and he has chosen. Kick a sign on that 10. Well, just another beautiful shot by Josh Blanchard. Right up second arrow. And then the nice kick into the 10 pin. Mark Ross says, you know, Josh, I used to do that. And Dick Allen gets a kick save and a beauty on the 10. That was a nice slap shot into the 10. Six pin, second to the right. When you see that kind of pin action, you know your bowling ball is going through the pins correctly. So the go is only at an open in the second frame. That's the big difference in this game so far. That's through the face. And a messenger is going to drop. Well, not his best. Both shots left of target out of his hand. Number one player in Japan. A couple of months ago, he had to throw three strikes in the 10th frame of the last game to make his first ever telecast out here, and he did it. Made it by one pin, and he will chop aside the six pin. Although it was close, he almost chopped off the six. Yeah, that was an unbelievable performance, and nobody was surprised when he did. Though a lot of these tour players already knew who he was, but for the American audiences, it was a great exhibition of his skills. And trust me, all of the managers were watching <laughs> that night. Now AJ Johnson. Gotta hurry. Holy cow, that almost got back. This shot goes all the way out to Boston before he gets back to the head pin. That covered a lot of ground. So we'll see if AJ cleans his plate. He does. Good work. Max score now 258 for the Adam Splitters, 246 for Motown. Frankie Lavoie in must strike territory up on the right lane. It. You could see it in his face. Not 
they're still in it. This still gives them a chance. But Silver Lake can strike ninth, 10th, and 11th and shut out Motown here in game one. Now you got a Hall of Fame anchor man and Chris Barnes. And a somebody who's already eligible for the Hall of Fame anchoring for Motown. And yeah, in his 20s, he's eligible. So it'll be Barnes versus Tackett here. But first, Doherty buries 10. A great shot by Todd Doherty. Now it'll be up to Chris Barnes in the 10th frame. If Simonson strikes. Well, he's done it once already. Got to have this one. Yeah, no problem. Well done. Come on. Yeah, baby. Let's go. Yeah, baby. Nice. So on to the tenth we go. You see the max scores haven't changed since Randy mentioned them earlier. Two-time team champion. Here's the fun part, he says. Well, he's been through this, I don't know, 5,000 times, it seems like. A bunch. Oh. The seven was a tap. Yeah, that was Chris, as we say, back in the day. Yeah, I just love this angle he's playing. Execution was perfect. And that 16 pounder coming in at that speed from that angle. Pins have no chance. What a great shot. Needs to duplicate it right here to shut out Motown. So a mark to win it. And strike would do it. Great call. Spare would have locked it up, but this is even day. better. <laughs> I don't know who said that. Did you hear that? It's 1988 all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Step towards getting back to the finals where they haven't been in a couple of years. They lead Motown 1 0. Motown must win this next game or they will be eliminated from contention. A strong performance from the Adam Splitters from top to bottom. So at Bayside Bowl, the semifinals of the Ocean View and Falmouth PBA League continuing with the Silver Lake Adam Splitters up 1-0 after a strong performance against the Motown Muscle. Chris Barnes striking out to lock out Motown. So let's go back. We've talked a little bit about Silver Lake and their dominance for a little while. And the Ebonite flashback today, we go to the 2014 and 15 Elias Cup Finals. And there's Chris Barnes striking again. They defeated LAX 4 to 2 to win the second of the Elias Cup. And that was in North Brunswick, New Jersey at Carroll Air. Tommy Jones was on that team. That team was ridiculously loaded. West Malott, for heaven's sakes. I mean, that team, frightening. Now we're in Portland. Look at Mika. He's in on this, too. We're at Bayside Bowl in 2015. The Adam Splitters defeated LAX again. Tom Doherty was on that team. Chris Barnes, again, another strong team. And they go back to back, but they haven't been to the finals since then. Dallas has won the last two. That's our Ebonite flashback for today. 
All Dick Allen seems to do in this building is win, by the way. So we show you the score from the first match. Randy, of course, we're going to switch lanes. How do you think that's going to shape up in match number two or game number two? Well, I think Motown Muscle's kind of behind the eight ball now. They've got to go to the left lane, which I think is the tougher of the two lanes. And I, I think the, the big advantage for Silver Lake is, one, they are so stacked top to bottom. But, two, they've got a couple of players that are playing the pattern a little bit differently in Chris Barnes and Tom Doherty. They're actually staying farther right and away from a lot of that mid lane traffic. I think they have a huge advantage going in, into game two. Got a little bit of everything on this Adam Splitters team. That's why they are such a tough out. And the Motown muscle might need a Motown miracle to keep this one alive. City of Portland, Maine has been the host of this event the last four years. We love coming here. Everybody does. Players especially enjoy this crowd. That's a E.J. Tackett support sign there. The squirrel nickname he picked up here in Portland. He's the anchor for Motown, but he was knocked out of it, really, by the Chris Barnes performance in the first game. E.J.'s 10th frame did not matter in this Baker team format to do the anchor man. You are number five and number ten frame. The leadoff bowlers here, Josh Blanchard and Jesper Svensson. Frames one and six. Blanchard's bowled it well so far today. And on the left lane, Josh Blanchard, X marks the spot. Playing in the lanes very similar to Barnes and Doherty. And going with urethane so he can go straighter. I really like that. Jesper Svensson has these lanes to himself today. At least in this match. And you see why he sweeps aside the seven. Got to look, he's very comfortable with The unique style of the two handed lefter, lefty from Sweden. Now, Shotokawa Zoe had a tough first game on the right lane. Let's see what he's learned that he can adjust to on this lane. Oh, great looking shot, and he got hosed. And that's what we've been seeing on the left lane for the players that play in the middle part of the lane. They make good shots, and all they are left with is a ring and ten for the right-handers. It seems like the only balls that have struck on that lane, for the most part, is unless you're throwing the big giant sweeping hook or you're right and going really straight. Reminiscent of what happened to him in Indianapolis in February when he missed a 10 pin to lose a match outright. That is going to be a gaping hole in the Motown scorecard. Let's see if Dick Allen can take advantage. <laughs> to the face, and he got a break. Tell me, he's the Baron of Bayside, Randy. It, if there's any question as to whose house this is, <laughs> it's, it's Allen's house. Goes through the face, trips a big four out, and... Allen, boy, I'll tell you what, he's got some great juju in this building. A little advice that Mark Roth never hurts either. Au revoir. It's the hook. It did. What a shot. <laughs> got an incredible touch in hand at the bottom of the swing. Come on. Does go, Frankie Lavoie. Build on that. Come on. And that shot showed me how much he trusts himself. Well, it, was, it, it was just beautiful out of his hand. The location was perfect. AJ Johnson has been in the spotlight before the USBC Masters three years ago, losing to Belmo. He did not strike in the first game. And he's going to leave behind a lot to clean up here. Right lane's a little tighter down lane. You got to watch your speed. AJ. 
through what looked like a pretty good shot, but at that velocity, there wasn't enough lane to get to get back to the one three pocket. Well, we've seen this made before the two ten. See how aggressive AJ is in this situation. His team up 20. That's going to shrink here in a moment. Off the back now. So the PBA League rookie leads an open frame, and all of a sudden that lead went from 20 to 8 off of a strike as well. And Anthony Simonson has looked really good. That was forward to ever win a major at age 19 when he won the Masters back in 2016. And right now, his team can take the lead if he strikes here. Are you kidding me? All right, he got a, what he deserved was not a 7-10, so he gets at least a 10 pin there. All right, run it down, come on. Man. Burn up, come on. Burn up. Again, it's the angle that the ball's entering the pocket that's creating the lack of carry. That ball came in late. It almost leaves the pocket 7-10. Carefully watching that one all the way with Simonson. I wanted to take another one. The first one was pretty close. And that one's that one's just as bad. Already staying with urethane on the right lane. From that shot, it looked like Tom was almost presenting the bowling ball to our audience before he releases another strike. The pose. <laughs> there it is. Can't throw any better than that. about every inch of that lane right there on that right side, man. That got one of the best releases in the game. My goodness, that was something. That was a freaky right. shot right there. Right. Well, last time we saw Chris a few moments ago, he was striking out to wrap up match number one. How about four strikes in a row? Five strikes in a row for this guy. A little Dick Weber special here. <laughs> Trip of that 5 7 there. late. That looked like you back in the day. Come on, Easter. That's our Barbasol close shave of the day. The great one, Dick Weber made a fortune doing this back in the day. It's a great pin action for Chris Barnes. Now the Adam Splitters. Trying to make it to the finals, already have the advantage, one nothing. You guys got the 10, just showing off, I'm just getting the five. Didn't have as far to go. Perfect. Well, this week, Extra Frame features live start to finish coverage of the PBA 50 Johnny Petraglia BVL Open on Long Island and the PWBA Fountain Valley Open in California. Do not miss a single frame of the action. Get your yearly, monthly, or three day subscription today by clicking on the Extra Frame link in the menu section of PBA.com. With Kimberly Pressler, Randy Peterson, Dave Lamont, and our ESPN crew, semifinals, frame number six with the Motown Muscle, the number eight overall seed. Taking on the Adam Splitters, the number five seed. And Motown in a little bit of trouble here. Down 18 and down one game. That's going to roll almost across the face and leave behind a three bit. Well, that was a pull. Not very good. Left of target, not enough oil in the middle part of the lane to hold it online. He hasn't made too many of these shots, I'll tell you that. 
been rock solid throughout the competition. But you feel like, though, when you don't strike against the Adams winners today, you're, you've lost ground. Yeah, I mean, they're not on, giving Motown any room to breathe. Jesper Svensson is perfect so far today. Randy, hold me, I'm frightened. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I don't know, but I think the head pin just got a stress fracture. <laughs> well, he, he's so much fun to watch when he's got it going, and right now he's got it going. Take a picture of that because you don't see that very often from the Esper, who is a cool cat normally. A lot of pressure on Shota in this shot. It's a good one. Ooh, yes. Beautiful. What a rebound. Just shaved enough off that eight pin to kick it aside. Catches just enough of the eight. Thank God. Max score now for Silver Lake 266, Max score Motown 228. This is turning into a route. And it's not even that Motown has been that bad, it's just been that the Adams players have been that good. Yeah. Now Frankie LeBlanc will do what he does. Heck of a bowler right there. Come on, now. Come on, come on. Let's go. Come on. There will be many more titles for him. Side of the three he owns already. The law perfect four for four today. AJ Johnson hasn't had the day he had in the quarterfinals, but it has not hurt his team. You don't like this shot here. You don't like bowling. <laughs> Full rack attack by A.J. Johnson. And same for Anthony Simonson. Too little too late unless they get some help from Silver Lake. Shot here for Tom Doherty. A great look from the perspective of his teammates. Game, set, match. They don't even need a mark in the 10th frame now. The Adam Splitters have Jesper Spenson firing at will from the left side. And the PBA League rookie, A.J. Johnson, matching the power from the right. It's going to be a tough team to beat. The Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League Elias Cup semifinals are brought to you by MainQuarterly.com. The main thing is you. Original. Get inspired at MainQuarterly.com. By BowlingBall.com. It's where bowlers go with free shipping on every item every day.
by Hyatt Place Oldport. Check in to Hyatt Place Oldport. Check out Portland, Maine. And by Dexter, the number one bowling shoe on the PBA Tour. Well, Chris Barnes has been bowling solidly in the anchor position, and you get a break or two every once in a while as the Adam Splitters move on. Chris is standing by with Kimberly. Chris, you know you may be the senior member of this team, but wow, did you step up and show these boys how it's done. So prior to this right here, you were perfect. Why do you think that is? Well, our team does work together extremely well. We tried a little bit different strategy today. Tommy moved out to where we were. Uh, Rich moved right. We just played together. Like I said, we got a bunch of anchormen on this team. I just happened to be one bowling last. And why did you go and get that new ball? Uh, obviously, the ball is getting a little flat through the pins, and so I wanted to see if I could uh, not catch it so much and still stay on top of it, make a little better move down lane. So maybe it'll show up in the finals. All right. Well, congratulations to you guys on moving to the finals. So the Silver Lake Adam Splitters are back in the finals. Haven't been there since 2015 when they won it, the first to back to second to back to back championships for Silver Lake. Now, who's going to get them next? The Dallas Strikers or the Philadelphia Hitman in what's going to be another intense semifinal? It is time to meet the two teams in our next semifinal, beginning with the Cisco Philadelphia Hitman. We are the Hitmen, always on target. Messenger, down goes the tag. Clutch under pressure. And Matt Sanders slams the door shut. It's our time. The Hitmen, we're going to take the cup. Oh, it's late there. Wow! Get out of my face! Hitmen. Leading off from Marion, Indiana, four times. The number two man has two PBA titles from Avon, Ohio, Chris Loeschutter. And the number three position, two-time major champion, including this year's Players' Championship from Saginaw, Michigan, Tom Smallwood. In the number four position from Evansville, Indiana, the Harry Golden Rookie of the Year of 2017, Matt Sanders. And your anchor man from Colchester, England, six-time Titleist owner of a major, Dom Barrett. for the Hitmen, 16-time PBA Titleist, Hall of Famer for the PBA and the USBC from Claremont, Florida, Jason Couch. <laughs> and now let's meet the two-time defending PBA League champion, Shipyard Dallas Strikers. And why do they call us the Strikers? <laughs> Boom! That's why. Looking for a three-piece. Who got this? Who got this? We're the team to beat. We're ready to bring the cup home one more time. It's a winner! From Langhorne, Pennsylvania, he has a major among his nine championships, Bill O'Neill. In the number two position, the only player manager in the PBA League. Number three all time with 38 PBA titles and seven majors from Claremont, Florida, Norm Du. In the three slot from O'Fallon, Illinois, three-time PBA regional champion, Kyle Sherman. In the number four position, this Orlando native is your reigning U.S. Open champion, Rhino Hayes. 
and your anchor man from Simpsonville, South Carolina, 18-time PBA champion, Tommy Jones. Well, I made the joke, this is an NFC East matchup, Philadelphia versus Dallas, but let's talk first about the Hitman. Another one of these teams that looks good from A to Z. Yeah, they really do, but I'll tell you what, they're the most hated team in all of Portland, Maine, as last week they knocked off the Lumberjacks, but that team, you're right, stacked top to bottom. There's been a lineup change. But I think the favorite coming into this matchup has got to be Dallas. They're looking to three-peat. They've got Norm Duke, but this goes, this goes a little bit pa past uh, a matchup. It's actually personal, in my opinion, as we take a look at what Norm did in the roll-off against Marshall Kent. Marshall left the 10 pin, and then there's Duke. Save some energy there, brother. Oh, no, he's spring, got plenty. He's not a spring chicken anymore. <laughs> but listen, manager Jason Couch for the Hitmen. He's from Claremont. Norm Duke, player manager from Claremont. Because there is also a battle for Claremont, Florida supremacy. Well, we're going to find out in Portland who wins the battle of Claremont to go for the Elias Cup against Silver Lake. It all makes sense to us. You're going to see it next. Taking a look inside of the unique Bayside Bowl in downtown Portland, Maine. And our last semifinal matchup. He's going to take on the Silver Lake Adams Splitters. It'll either be Dallas or Philly. Kimberly standing by with two of the young stars, two guys in their first year making an impact. They definitely are making an impact, Kyle Sherman. And Matt Sanders, you know what? You guys are both newcomers to the PBA League, but you guys are making a serious impact on each of your teams. So how exciting is it for you guys to be here representing the PBA Young Bloods on such a large stage? Oh, gosh. With this environment, uh, you can't be anything but exciting. Uh, this is the most exciting atmosphere we have, and I got Hall of Famers on my team, so this is a dream come true. You sure do. Best of luck to you guys today in the semifinals. All right, so Matt, I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked him. So you are a young and up-and-comer. How exciting is it for you to be here representing the young bloods of the PBA on such a large stage? It's very exciting. I'm here with my with my buddies in the Central Region and, and Don from the UK. Uh, I think the Hitmen are ready to take down Dallas Strikers today. Oh, he's already talking a big game, guys. Oh, he's got to back it up though, Kimberly. And you know what? He has the game to do it. He take a look there at Kyle Sherman, and he. Was specially chosen by my partner Randy Peterson for today's track tech talk. Really love this game, so solid. And watch this and how he gets to the foul line. Check out the right foot, how it's open. What this does is it helps him clear his hips and get his hips out of the way so he can swing the ball up underneath his right shoulder. Obviously, the great balance at the foul line, but here's a little Sean Rash in him as well. You see the cup wrist at the top of the swing and the left arm out in front. Classic positions, head to the right, and then the athletic move of staying balanced at the foul line. Great stuff. So our Baker semifinal is about to begin. It's very simple. You win two, you win. And if there's a tie at 1-1, we'll have a one-ball roll-off. Dallas knows all about that. They've had to go through it two consecutive years. They've met in the semis, and Dallas took them down last year. A little lazy coming around the corner for Ronnie, but not a bad opening shot. It's pretty loose, too. See how the six pin kind of got shaved to the right? Goes to a urethane bowling ball for a spare. He was perfect against the Lumberjacks in the quarters. Yeah. Well, first time he shot a spare in this year's PBA League. There might be a little twirl on that one, Coach, sorry. <laughs> go. Go. And Bill O'Neill, as solid as you can ask for as your leadoff guy. And a little tap on the 10, but not nearly enough to take it down. Boy, oh, it looked like another good shot. 
six again. The sidewall doesn't do its job on the 10 pin. Yet it's open spare spare in the first frame. We've got at least one strike to minute. Leadoff bowler in the number two spot. Chris Lowe shutter. Little struggles against Portland. Not this time. Trips aside the seven. Yeah, good one there. Last time we saw Normie was going in the five spot. So this is a pretty big adjustment going from anchor to number two. And the adjustment was made by him. Back to the tape or the court. So the new anchor man that Norm Duke picked is Tommy Jones. Not exactly a bad choice. Sir. Because Tommy Jones is the talisman. If you have Tommy Jones on your team, you have a better than 50% chance of winning this yeah. thing. Six years, and he's won it four times. And a little soft 10 for Duke. He's already made the calculations in his head for his next oh, shot. No question. Not counting the spare. He saw his hand gesturing back and forth. For Norm, it's a half a board to the right. Leave your target the same. One of the few players that doesn't switch to a spare ball. He does it with his hand and his release. And also one of the great trick shot artists you'll ever see in the game. My tape fell out of my hole. It just fell out. So it was laying down in the hole when I put my hand in it. I'm like, oh no! Tom Smallwood was the anchor in the quarterfinals. And Smalls leaves behind a quiet 10. Yeah. A lot of flat 10s in the last three shots. So Dom Barrett is the new anchor man for this game. And this was a very late change made by Jason Couch. We were originally given the lineup with Don Barrett in the three hole and Smallwood in the five. But right before we hit air, we, it was changed. Cal Sherman was in the number three spot in the quarterfinals and bowled very well. Just like something like that. Impressive. So much young talent on the tour these days. There's another one right there. Rookie of the year champion. Jones style that was just yelled by Jason Couch. Of course, Jason loves that A little trip three forward, and then turns around and gives it right to Tommy Jones. Now, our other lefty in this one, U.S. Open champ Rhino Page. A late add to the party. As the four is going around the seven, it actually throws the tail hook. Watch this little tail hook on the seven. Pretty cool. Nice pin carry there for Rhino Page and a big double early. So your anchor man will bowl the fifth and tenth frames. And here's one of the most accomplished players in the world in Dom Barrett. And that line we 
seen used a lot by the right hand who's on the left lane. Remember, real deep angle through the front or much straighter right of that seems to work well on the left lane. Everything in between doesn't look so hot. Tommy Jones in the anchor position. Familiar territory for him. He can handle it. Unusual grip, puts his thumb in first and fingers last. Gotta go. Oh, wow. wow, did that just seem to accelerate through the pin? And turns around and gives it right back to Couch. <laughs> now, there's gonna be no lack of jaw jacket in this semifinal between these two sides. Semifinal action continuing here as we give you our Columbia 300 fun fact. This awful looking thing is called the Big Four or Double Pinochle. It's the 4 6 7 10 split. Only one time has it ever been made on television. That was by, of course, this man, Walter Ray Williams Jr. He did it in Norcross, Georgia. Watch this miracle. It's a pitch fast. It goes right. Look out! Here you Who was that excited young announcer I heard? <laughs> I think it was me, not sure. Now, Randy he, is, he was surprised. Yes, he was. I, he actually probably turned away from that shot. Randy, of course, has never left that split, so he really can't even tell you yeah. how to convert it. So there was your, your textbook right there from Walter Bell. Dave, the only time I left the big four was on a four-bagger. <laughs> Back we go to the top of the order in the last frame here for the leadoff bullets. Perfection again from Ronnie Russell back to the form he showed in the quarters. Now last Russell time up, he left a little soft <laughs> 10 and then let's just say that time he got a mitt full. Made sure that ball got around the corner. Bill O'Neill, he and Jason Belmont, he won the Roth Holman doubles earlier this year. You don't want to snap hook in golf, but it doesn't look too bad in this sport. Boy, he really got that ball to read. Checked up nicely. Watch this ball reaction. Great hand by Bill O'Neill. Gets it a little short so he can make it read a little bit earlier. And after that, it's just a 10 pin party in the pit. Now Chris, and he flushes one down. Yeah, making it look easy now, the boys the are. The Beautiful shot by Low Shedder. And North started to back that one up. He knew. Last time up, that little soft 10. A little more down lane reaction. Gets the six into the 10. And a great react by the great Duke. You better check the water pressure in Portland, Randy, because there's a lot of flushing going on right now. They're dialed in. They've got a nice ball reaction on both lanes. And they're executing. And that was one of the best lines I've ever heard, Dave. You're very welcome. Asking for it to hold, ask and you shall receive. 
and you heard player manager Norm Duke say that's urethane going down the lane meaning that urethane's carried oil down the lane and created a little bit of three. hole. Both these yes, teams three today. Yes, are today. ripping it. Dallas has six in a row. The Hitmen have five in a row. Their max is 270. Oh, and a ripping, ringing seven. Unlucky. Is that it? Certainly good enough to strike. And this is no ordinary spare attempt here. This is significant. You can't leave anything on the deck here in the foundation. He's already missed one of these in this competition. Not this time. And that's why you have that little bit of smile of relief. He remembered. Pretty intense concentration on Rhino's face there. Said he was serious. Yeah, this is pretty serious. It would have gotten real serious if the 710 stood up. Messenger flying across. And how about you? We've heard of dueling banjos. That was dueling messengers that time. And Tom Barrett paralyzing a five pin. 249 max score for the Hitmen. 279 for Dallas Strikers. Jason Couch right there. Absolutely one of the finest players of all time. I mean, goodness, it was a period there. He was dominant. Only player to ever win back to back to back TSCs. Relate to this. And he knew it as soon as he let go of it. And lucky he had caught the head pit and running away. He'll take it. All right, let's just get the one point. The game take it as well as give it away. So an incredibly solid 248, but yet. Strikers are in position to win. Any mark for TJ. He wants a re-rack also. Squash here. Just doesn't matter. Yep. So Norm not in the anchor position at his behest. He makes the call here as the only player manager in the PBA League. And that's a winner. Well, the Strikers team understands what it takes to win the PBA League. They've done it two times in a row, and Tommy Jones always shines in this event. Oh, that poor seven pin. Here's an up-close and personal look at seven pin pain. Well, Portland, Maine, just a stunning sight in this city. And of course, once you get out to where the water is, so beautiful. The entire state was like this. And inside, you got a little crazy to go with your bowling here. The Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League semifinals. And Kimberly Pressler is standing by with both managers. I sure am. You know, there were a lot of lead changes in that last match. And 
Jason, unfortunately, your team was not able to take the win. So now you need to win this and you need to win a roll off. So in this moment, what do you say to your team? It's not what I say to my team. I tell them the facts. I've never lost two games in a row in my life to Norm Duke, and it won't be today either. Oh, I love the confidence that this guy has. Thank you so much. So, Norm, he seems pretty confident. You guys bowled really well, but uh, That's I That's not ask. confident. That is not confidence. That is begging and wishing. And he doesn't know which hand he likes best. That's what that oh, is. Man. Hey, he lives five minutes from me. I can read him like a book. I love this. Now, i got to ask you, are there any lineup changes for you? Yeah, uh, because of this ball return right behind me, the guys that like to get in deep, they they got to get around that thing, and it's not that easy. So I'm going with the left-hander in the, in the field shot, they, uh, the 10th frame. So you're going with Rhino? Rhino Page, yes, sir. Yes, right. ma'am, in your case. All right. Good luck to you. Uh -huh. So we promised you a little Claremont, Florida trash talk. We take a look at the lineup now for the Dallas Strikers. Tommy Jones moves up to four. The top three remain the same, and Rhino Page, U.S. Open champion, moves into the anchor position again because of the ball return. So if I were Norm Duke right now, I'd just take my mic and go like this <laughs> and drop it after that little exchange. It was a good, uh, some good jabs thrown in, uh, in that interview. I, I think the interesting thing is going to be for Rhino Page, how did the urethane ball of Matt Sanders affect the left side of the lane and we're going to have to wait to find out. All right let's get to our go bowling fan tip of the week and we're going to hear from Brooklyn who's in South Dakota with her question for Randy. Hi my name is Brooklyn Gagnon and I bowl league at sport ball and I need help with staying behind the ball. Randy can you help me out? Wait a minute. She needs help. She just she just threw ten back. Look, there's a couple of ways to think about it. One, first thing I would do is I try to firm your wrist up. When you get to the top of the backswing, your right wrist is a bit inverted. So I'd like to see that wrist at least flat or maybe a little bit cupped. When you get to the bottom of the swing at the release point, think about maybe your right thumb pointing to the right wall or the inside of your left hand pointing to the left wall. Think about that. That'll help you stay behind the ball a lot better. All right. Now that the haze is cleared from the trash talk. How do you see this next game in the lineup change. Well, it's hard to second guess Norm Duke. I mean he he is the professor when it comes to this kind of stuff. I think they're the favorites. Uh, I think they're going to get it done and they're going to win in a sweeper 2-0. And if they do that they will go on to the finals against the Silver Lake Adams splitters Philadelphia will try to stay alive and move on in game number two. So here we go with the final semifinal game to get to the finals. If Philadelphia takes it, then they'll have to win a roll off to advance. Dallas can lose the game and still advance if they win the roll off. But if they win the game, they are locked in and it would be a big time matchup with the Silver Lake Adams players of Mark Baker. They'll start with Billy O, and that'll be on the left lane. Movie before with Bill. And he's the player that starts the strikers off because the rest of the team can really get a good read off of his ball motion. Ronnie Russell, two time Team USA. Just a hair high. And he'll go back to his teammates with some intel. Feel a little more at those. Yeah, it's definitely picked up. That was it peeled a little bit more than I thought it was going to. It hooked, it hooked a little bit more, and then Don Barrett replied with, "Yeah, it looked like it picked up." Norm Duke standing in the two spot. Remember, he made the change, swapping Tommy Jones and Rhino Page at the bottom of the order. Requesting some help, and he gets it. 
Nothing wrong with a little body English. That was a horrible shot, guys. It's also a strike. Oh, he said it was horrible. I'm guessing he missed it a little bit at the bottom. Didn't quite catch all of it. And back to the tape. Yeah. Now low shutter. And we're seeing a lot of those right-handers just sort of paralyzing the four, five, and seven. I mean, with a lot of power from I didn't that see angle. you get a place for Saturday and bring lotion Sunday. <laughs> Kyle Sherman steps in. He was the final pick in the draft. Had a ninth place finish in the U.S. Open in 2017. That's his best finish on tour so far. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. That is just not right when you throw a shot that good. Wow. All I can say is, Kyle, I feel your pain. And what are these people doing to you? They're chanting Randy. Does anybody, can, can anybody just let the solid eight go? Please. Uh, I want to know why Chris Barnes may have been the guy who started the chance. Just saying. <laughs> oh my heavens, and he almost missed it. Maybe Chris didn't start it, but he's a suspect. How about when you can't miss the pocket? Let's look at that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was going to ask you, should I ever miss it? Yeah. How about when you can get it? That's a brutal break for both the strikers and for Kyle. Tom Smallwood is known for taking advantage of other people's misfortune. Like that. I wouldn't expect anything different from Tom Smallwood. So Tommy Jones now in the number four spot. Remember, you only get two frames in this Baker format. So he'll bowl the fourth and the ninth. Fun on a Sunday. A little filth from Tommy Jones on the left lane there. And right now, the four right handers for Dallas on that left lane look very strong. Looks like it's easy to get their ball to the pocket. Let's see what Ronald Page's ball reaction looks like when he steps up in the fifth. Sanders is perfect. Great shot. Classic style. The, the game of Matt Sanders is so pleasurable to watch. Yeah, it really is. Now Rhino Page. We had a quick word with him in between games. Yeah, he told us exactly what Norm did. He said they were concerned with the ball return for the right-handers. And there it is. There it is. That's what urethane does. It creates hang down lane. And that's what I was wondering if it would happen to Rhino Page. Okay, make sure one. See how they've twisted the ball return cover there so the right handers can get around it. And he'll just take the one. Remember, reactive resin, bowling balls absorb oil. Urethane bowling balls drag oil down the lane. It creates friction up front, makes oil travel, and that's exactly the way Rhino Page's bowling ball reacted. That's something to think about if we do have to have a roll off. And, oh, I was waiting for that seventh pin to go down because we've seen so many similar yeah. strikes. to the pocket. 
for Don Barrett. That still a pretty good shot. Straight at it. And straight in the back. So the Hitmen need this game, and halfway through, they have a 22 pin advantage. Are we headed for a roll off with the strikers? Again. Take a look inside Bayside Bowl. We may hear that bell being rung. If we do, that means we're headed to a roll-off. That is a Bayside tradition. Now, if you're looking for the last-minute gift for moms, dads, and grads, the PBA has you covered with officially licensed PBA apparel and merchandise available at PBA.com. New apparel categories include retro, 60th anniversary, signature, and PBA league designs. Simply head to PBA.com and click on the shop PBA link to the main menu and check them all out. I don't know if the Charles Montgomery fatheads are available at PBA.com, <laughs> but I wouldn't mind one. They should be. Charles, our ace handheld cameraman, gives you a unique look at our goalers. <laughs> and Billy Yell not troubled by that ball return at all. Yeah, <laughs> Another great shot by Bill O'Neill. Big shot here because the strikers pick up a little momentum out of the break after the open frame by Page. And Ronnie Russell has bowled very well in this event. And an unfortunate break there. Well, it looked like that ball traveled a mile to get to the pocket. Again, uh, sideline to sideline on this shot. The lay down area was probably around 33 on the left, out to about six. Look out. First time for that to happen. Well, the lead just shrunk, and the strikers are off of a strike. You don't leave loose change on the floor in front of Norm Duke. You just don't. Cooler than a polar bear's feet, he steps up the seventh, working on a strike. And just delivers once again. One more time for Low Shedder, this time a soft ten. I don't know how many times we see it when there's a mistake by a team. And it kind of snowballs, and the other team takes advantage. And the Dallas team looking for a third straight title, potentially against Silver Lake, who won the two previous to Dallas. And can Philly get him away? He must win this game and then win the roll off. Now, can the rookie step up? When his team needs him, counting on him, everything at stake. The Elias Cup, this environment. Kyle Sherman, it's time for you to shine. And a sleeper back there. Fortunately, that's a 2 8. Looked like he dead missed it at the bottom. One spare now. Location was good, but he didn't quite catch it. And now he's left himself with a tester. And we had this on one of our fan tip of the weeks earlier. Randy explaining to our viewer that the best way to go after this is to curve it. Right. Okay, got that. That's our. 
big conversion for Kyle Sherman, and it is going to be our hammer tough air replay. The back pin is a trouble pin. He covers both of them. Throws the two pin into the eight. But a strike there would have been huge for Dallas. Strike there is huge for Philadelphia. Yeah. All but two for two in this game. Well, that gives them now a max score of 237, where Dallas can only get to 225. And how do you feel if he's your roll-off guy if you're Philly Smallwood? Yeah, I'll take him. I'll take Smallwood in that situation any day of the week and twice on Sunday. So Tommy Jones in the number four spot moved. Well, I know Page, and Page made a mistake in the fifth. Could have been a strike to the foundation instead as a quiet ten. One spare. Give Ryan a chance now. Well, this has been back and forth. After the open in the fifth, by Dallas, Philly opens in the sixth. Right now, Tommy Jones and his team trailing by three. We'll get it. So here's a huge shot for Matt Sanders. His first time in Portland. He has bowled well. And he has a chance to go a nice foundation for the hitmen going into the tenth. it to hold on and it did. Ronald Page has to strike out now to have any chance. Who might the roll off bowler be for Dallas. I have an uh, I think we all have an idea who's going to be. I'll pick a, a guy. He'll pick a guy too. Right on straight through for a beautiful strike. Much better shot. For Rhino Page. Going to need two more. Got Dom Barrett in the anchor position for the hitman. If Rhino strikes out, he'll force Dom Barrett to mark. If, Dom, if he does strike out, Dom Barrett gets nine on the first ball and misses, we'll have a tie. So we can have a roll off to potentially have a roll off. Correct. Somebody said it's really good, and they were absolutely right. Big field, big, big field right here. Big field. Boy, what could have been if Rhino gets to take back the one in the fifth, where he went light and left the 7 9. A strike here. Philly has to mark in the 10th. Nine out wins it now for Philly. <laughs> so if Philly grabs this, will Norm Duke call his own number again in the one ball roll off with everything at stake, the birth in the finals? And who does Jason Couch turn to? I'll tell you what. Not over yet. A lot of crazy things can happen when playing the extreme angles. <laughs> Gonna have to work for it. Spare and nine. They win. to make this.
Yep, nine to win, strike wins, eight ties, less than eight, and the strikers move on. And a re rack coming up. The roll off is very simple. Captains right. will pick, you get one shot. If you tie, then you pick again. So we get a winner. Don't ring it just yet. Potentially twice. If Dallas wins this roll off, they're moving on. If Philly wins the roll off, and that's the bell to make it official, we may be rolling off for a roll off unless Dallas wins it. It's that simple. Unbelievable what just happened there. I think Norm's going to go with Rhino Page. Ladies and gentlemen, by PBA rule, this game must be decided by a one ball sudden death roll off. The higher seated team, the Philadelphia Hitmen, will have choice of starting order. They have elected to go first. Matt, Jason, who's bowling? Matt Sanders. Matt Sanders up for the Hitmen. Rhino Page up for the Dallas Strikers. Good luck. They've called in the southpaws from the bullpen. This is interesting. I, I would not have anticipated this. I, I'm not anything against the players involved here, but you, I might have thought Tom Smallwood and Norm Duke, I thought, would call his own number again, but they have gone lefties here. Interesting. The only thing I think that's going to stop Sanders on this shot is Carey. You get the ring in seven out. I think it's going to be 10 in the pit. Well, he, his last shot was absolutely gorgeous. See if he can handle this kind of pressure. There's the seven swept aside. What a shot. Rhino Page has to match. I mean, that was pretty incredible right there. To get it this good off of his hand, and then watch the four pin, second from the left, just slap the seven, silly. Great shot, Matt Sanders. All right, Rhino Page, U.S. Open champion, has to strike. Well, we'll have another roll off. Going to drop, and now we roll off to get to the finals. One more time, we ring the bell. This time it's four and all. Winner of this roll off is moving on. Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. The veteran right hander. All right, fans, roll off number two. Matt Sanders will start for the Philadelphia Hitmen. It looks like Norm Duke is keyed up and ready to go for the Dallas Strikers. The winner of this roll off wins the match. And will face Silver Lake in the PBA League Finals for the Elias Cup here in Portland. Matt Sanders certainly proved he can handle it last shot. Well, Norm, last year you want to roll off with a strike. This year you want to roll off with a strike. This time he has to strike to keep his team in it.
But that's what Dallas did. See it goes for Hilly. Yeah, I thought so. Yep. And Messenger delivers for the unsinkable Tom Smallwood. Uh, and Rhino Page is back. Good moments, I guess. <laughs> Again. Strike and we keep going. Anything less than that, and the Hitmen make their first finals. No. Philadelphia has advanced, knocking out the two time defending champions. One of the great left-handers ever, Jason Couch, turned to the lefty, Matt Sanders, not once, but twice. And Sanders delivered, and then Tom Smallwood with the rack ripper, and Philadelphia has moved on. Great job, bro. Unbelievable pin carry there from that deep inside, gets the messenger into the 10, and Rhino pegs this ball hung out to dry. Philadelphia in the finals for the first time will be taking on the Silver Lake Adam Splitters. Next week, you will not want to miss that. We'll wrap things up when we come back. The Ocean View at Falmouth BBA League Elias Cup semifinals are brought to you by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. By Cisco Northern New England, at the heart of food and service. By the United States Bowling Congress, creating competitive opportunities at all levels as we build a future for the sport. Visit Bowl.com for more. And by Barbasol Razors. Here's a no-brainer. Barbasol's making razors. Try the Barbasol Ultra 6 Plus today. We started with eight. We're down to two. You take a look at what happened in the quarterfinals. Philadelphia took care of Portland, then defeated Dallas in the quarters. Motown dumped the number one seeds and then taken out by the Silver Lake Adam Splitters 2-0. So there we have it. The number five Adam Splitters, the number three Hitman. Next Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. And here is our Geico Championship recap. Semifinals number one, game one, Silver Lake versus Motown. Well, this is all Silver Lake Adam Splitters. Barnes splitting racks as they strike out the 10th frame to win 258-235. Game two, a lot of the same for Silver Lake. Chris Barnes doing his best, best Dick Weber imitation. They would sling six in a row late, and they win game two, 245 to 207. Then it was Philly and Dallas. All Dallas in game one. Norm Duke, big double in the 10th frame with Rhino Page right behind him. They win game one, 278, 248. And then all of the fireworks. There was a roll off to have a roll off. Somebody released this guy from his dirty cage. Smallwood shredding the rack. Page has to answer. He gets nine. Philly moves on to the title match. And Kimberly Pressler is standing by with some of the hit men. Talk about an exciting finish. So, Matt Sanders, when we talked earlier, you said you were super excited to be here. But you know what? Your team needed you, and you stepped up big time. Talk to me about those shots. Uh, that, that was pretty nerve-wracking, but I just wanted to do what I could and uh, give it to Smalls. I knew that it would probably go down to another shot at least, so I wanted to do everything I could. And uh, didn't throw the greatest shots, but I stood up and kept it in front of me, so they all fell. Well, you did exactly what you needed to do to step it up for this guy right here. Now, Tom, 
you looked like you were a little bit nervous when that left your hand. Walk me through your emotions. Oh, uh, actually, it wasn't too bad. Um, actually, had a really good reaction in that lane. Kind of a little confident over there. Uh, you know, he got us in a position to do it. And, you know, in this environment, this is so awesome. It's, you know, nice to perform when you need to. And a uh, great time. We have one more match left. One more match, and congratulations, because the Hitmen now make it to the finals for the first time ever. And their opponent will be a two-time champion, the Silver Lake Adam Splitters, coming up May 13th, Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern for the Ocean View and Falmouth PBA League Championship. Philadelphia versus Silver Lake. For Kimberly Fressler, Randy Peterson, I'm Dave Lamont, thanking our entire ESPN crew. We'll see you next Sunday at 1 p.m. for the Elias Cup Championship from Portland, Maine.